Okay, my name is Les and I make books. Uh, but what? No, that's not right. So how does this work? The black one, okay. Lovely, thank you. Okay, uh, it's more book works than books themselves. So for me, this is an example of what a book work should be. It's actually about a conversation between two ideas. So maybe a, a book work might look more like this, this idea of a space to exchange ideas. And then if you're, I teach on a book art course at Camberwell College of Arts, and one of the things we talk about is defining what, it is, what our practice is. And so maybe this is a book work. It's all, my record collection is somehow a self-portrait. And have books got anything to do with binding? And if so, if we bind things together, do they have book-like qualities? So we are a book bound together by this conference, by this room. So what is a brick wall if it's not individual elements somehow bound together? And I'm starting to show you this. It's a kind of way of thinking about what it is we do. as a book cover, you start to start to think about the, the conversations that have ha been had in these, in these uh, buildings and think about the stories that have been told. So when you're walking on the street, have books got anything to do with text? And if this is text, is the street a book? And what does that make these things? And I, I'm, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I was just talking to somebody about the idea of uh, how do you get to be working with nano scientists if you make these wooden things and really for me it's about an understanding of what your practice is in some way uh, so when you're walking along this is actually a sign just outside my house i have great uh, neighbors uh, the idea of text and reading the landscape sort of springs to mind and i think yesterday i, I heard a tweet that you had a thing about ganses and if you, do you know about the gansey and the idea that there's a whole uh, story uh, embedded in this, the families of these individual uh, fishermen would sort of encode a language into this knitting. And therefore you think about this as an idea of an, a, a, some kind of book work. And these are proto, this is a proto book work. And this is another piece of book work, uh, uh, some kind of symbol that engages with the idea of containing knowledge. And I suppose what I'm trying to get you to think about is what are, the st what are the stories, what's the ideas, what's the concepts behind why we make and how we make decisions about the work that we make? Um, one of the students, I asked my students this question, uh, at what point does a map become a book when it's all folded up? And the answer is it was never a book, it was always a map, happened to be folded. Because actually uh, books aren't, well books are kind of things that are conceived as image text, there's this, hi there is this hybrid sort of idea. And writers don't actually sort of write books. They write a text that goes into a book. And so this was never conceived as book. It doesn't have a kind of whole book philosophy. And if you're thinking about folding, is, has this got something to do with books? I'm kind of not sure. And so if you go into your closet, is, is this a kind of book work? And what's packaging got to do with the idea of book? And these are lots of questions that I kind of ask the students again. But I ask myself constantly, um, this is a fish, it's not a book. But it has <laughs> book-like book qualities, and it has a sense of revelation. There's an idea that you can display things within it. And obviously there's a whole sort of uh, zoomorphology is a kind of idea where you can actually start to steal ideas from nature about the book. There's images of what... These are images of books that maybe are more book-like than the book, which is the book is about sequence, control, order. And as a maker of things who've been around a long time, I trained on this. It, uh, apprentice was like, like four years and now I can go and buy one of these for like 30 quid and publish. How do I cope with that as a, as a maker when my, uh, <coughs> my, uh, my history is kind of stolen in a strange way? Here we have a piece of early cinema. You basically wind this handle and look through here and this sort of, these images sort of spin round. It's sort of sort of the relationship between cinema and books starts to take place. So if you go to the cinema, you think of 
a book being this incredibly long, thin book that's bound in a very particular way. And you know that this is a pile of poppadoms, and this came first. Maybe the ultimate poppadom book. But books are about sequence and spaces in time. And so this is Grand Canyon. But on its side, it looks a bit like a book. And so therefore, books contain this idea of time. <coughs> Again, this is the back of the field of me, of where I live. And I suppose this is thinking about this field as a book. Individual elements bound together, images or page, text on a page maybe. People come across this, the wonderful Eames. And this is something that I, <coughs> it goes across two pieces of my teaching. I do this, the exact talk when I talk about the book. And I do this exact talk when I talk about textiles. And this idea that there's sequences and grids and there's spinning and there's order. And as you go deeper and deeper into us, there's this sense of layers. And at the core of all, all of us, there's this extraordinary book and its DNA. So effectively, you are all books. And some of you are actual books because you've actually got tattoos. And so there's not that much of a, uh, a, a sort of leap, really, to think about this image and text working together. And Fahrenheit 451, where people became books through the uh, memorizing of the books. All of that thinking, which is a bit slightly mad sometimes, gets you to these sorts of things, where you have structures where conversations take place. So here there's this thing happening where this I am the book talking to you and you are the book talking to me. I've actually brought this one along. You can sort of play with it. It's the beginning of sort of trying to make sense of the audience and the book. Because as a maker of books, you have to consider who's going to actually touch these things and how they're going to touch them. Uh, along the way, I made some log books, which were funny at the time. <laughs> uh, and then I started to kind of think about the materiality of the thing. So these are books that have never existed. They exist in 3D uh, software. <coughs> and then you kind of make books that are about the Isle of Sky, and then you make books in lots of long, thin paper things. And um, all because of that kind of core idea of what is a book. You kind of know what you're doing. It's a sense of bookness. And you even get to think about the duality of book, which means that I can go away and make these huge monuments and call them books, and it gives me a sort of root. Uh, 26 uh, foot pa uh, 26 Benches on a footpath, the idea of walking becomes the book. These are chapter headings on a book. Two roads, reading, of ro reading the roads, and I can in in sort of embed history into these books, into these roads. Okay. Uh, this is John Bentley, <coughs> and this is here to sort of the... I think as makers... Two minutes, thank you. As makers, you have this... Uh, as makers, there's these moments in time where big things happen. And John made me think about the nature of the book being right and wrong. And so I made a book for the first time that couldn't be wrong. But if, whenever you picked it up, it was right. But the book materiality somehow told you that you were doing it wrong, but not necessarily that wrong. I bought one of these along, you can play with these as well. But it's also about hard work and repetition, and you realise that actually, as makers, we spend a lot of time doing the same repetitive thing over and over and over and over again. Okay. Habit blew my mind. I spent a lot of time in these rooms, these clean rooms, and he asked me some questions. He's a scientist. How do you know what to do next? How do we know what to do next as makers? When is it finished? So I made a whole lot of capes as a result of being in this room. And I was very aware of how I sort of moved around in this space. And then started making films. And I was st I've stopped almost making things. And I'm making, sort of exploring ideas. And this now this film shows the, the work that went into making the capes. It becomes one and the same, really. The idea of the space that a book inhabits. So here we have, <coughs> eventually, thank you. 
here we have a bookwork being operated by a robot. And the book is mapped all the spaces that uh, it's sort of occupying, whilst it's actually drawing its own space that it exists in. Yeah, I had to do that as well. <laughs> One of the things that the... Uh, Something I'd never done. Something I'd never done. Which is why I did this. <laughs> then I actually thought, I can do that. I just attach a whole lot of lights to a very large thing. I am no, I know. <laughs> I know. Brutal, I, said. I know, no, it's cool, it's cool. I'm going to stop <laughs> there. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. No, it's cool.